Kim, Man and Medan, uh, yes. walk me through the trip. How was that? What'd you see? Oh, yeah, that was, uh, I went to Guilford, England. The best. Did you go to the Guilford City Museum? No, I didn't. I was like, I seriously, I flew in, I had a day at the studio, and then I flew back. So mm. it was like a super fast trip. But, but surely you saw like the creators of Dreams wandering around the streets, Sean Murray from Hello well, Games Dreams saying was Cheerio. was launching that week, what? so it was like oh, really exciting. Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't there pe- be people from Lionhead like Will will create whimsy for food signs. <laughs> Wasn't Lionhead yeah. and Guildford also? I think so. Yeah, there's uh, guys driving by those signs fast in their Criterion cars. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful place. They're a uh, tight-knit crew And you crew were there, there seeing Supermassive, P.S. Yes, we didn't yes. Say that yet. Uh, <laughs> until Dawn developers, for yeah. those yeah. who don't know. I'm sure you do if you're watching the segment, though. Uh, yeah, they're working on their next big project after having done those two VR games that yeah. were associated with Until Dawn. This they've decided to uh, have Namco Bandai publish, so it's their first like not PlayStation exclusive in a while. That's interesting. Okay, and so and it, it's an interesting setup because it's an anthology. So Man of Medan is the first game out of five that they're doing, and they plan to release two a year. And they're, two a year. Yeah, I know. This is very <laughs> ambitious of them. <laughs> Up until the fifth, so like, then you know, I'm just like, okay, that's really ambitious. It's like, they said it's the one each game is like half the time that it takes to play through until dawn. Which I like, love until that. Until dawn okay. is like eight to ten, so this is probably like five ish. But they said uh, the branching storylines though are more in depth, which gives it more content than what they pre- than what was in until dawn. Yeah. So like, they created a whole new like branching system to kind of. Uh, accommodate all the different choices and relationship states. And um, I even got to see firsthand just how different those relationship states can be. For instance, I got to play a segment where the one guy proposes to the girl and she you can either say yes or no. So your trip either Perfect. starts off like very happy and celebratory yeah. or very awkward. And Joe, you seem like a yes man in that situation when you're playing that game. Well, what I, what I like about this... <laughs> I would probably say yes. Oh, yeah. really? No, no, no. What I think, what I like about this idea, though, is the, is I think what we see in a lot of choice-driven games, and even one that's as responsive as Until Dawn was, is that eventually choices end up having to converge and just sort of like kind of deliver something similar. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lot of a lot of the sort of nuance of these comes from the details along the way, even if some of the big beats are Mm -hmm. similar. But I think if you're shooting for like a four hour game, I think that that opens up the possibility for what I think a lot of gamers want or expect from choice driven stuff, which Mm -hmm. is like drastically different interactions. It's like Cork and I have been talking about forever for we wanted Telltale's Twilight Zone. (laughs) We don't want the running consequences. We just want each episode to be wildly different. It feels like that. Just the shorter, more varied stuff. That was what was cool is they let me play um, a specific uh, segment early in the game um, I actually played through it like three times and each time so many different things varied like a simple choice of like should I talk back to this guy can maybe like reveal different information or have dire consequences than others and um, I saw completely different scenes I mean there's also like the opportunity you can have for one of your characters to die at any moment like I wasn't expecting a QT to pop up. So I was just like sitting there watching and I killed one of the main characters oh, really? like, early in the game. So, uh, but even that he had so many different ways he could have played the situation where he could have helped his friends because basically, so I'll set this up. It's kind of complicated. Um, these four friends. So there's two siblings, um, two brothers, and then there's another set of siblings, a sister and a brother. And like two of them are dating and one is two of the, the brother and the sister well not like uh-huh. not like that you gotcha. know what i'm saying no G- game of thrones normalized it that's yeah it's cool now yeah. but they're all going on like this big uh dive so these kids obviously have money they come from money um so there's like this world war ii site the one brother is a big like history buff and is super excited for it so they go and do this and there ends up being this um invasion by this group who kidnaps them and they don't know what's going because they know they have money right so they flashed uh-huh. money at them they got an altercation earlier and uh 
Then it turns really strange because during that altercation, this ghost ship kind of appears and Perfect. then you end up on this ghost ship. So, but realistically, it's going to be the ghost ship that they were like diving to discover or whatever. Well, the ghost ship. Well, I mean, there's a whole like legend with this ghost. So it's based off an actual legend of this ship that. Oh, um, a real ghost yeah, ship. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> well, there's like there's a people died under mysterious circumstances. There's all these different ways to. Uh, all these different theories on what happened. So yeah. they're taking their own stance on it, which is super interesting. Um, yeah, so there's a lot going on here. And it's a lot to like pa- unpack in like a few moments in it. it does it feel just like Until Dawn in a new setting, though? Like that's all yeah. a lot of people want. I mean, yeah. that is what it feels like for Great. sure. But they, you know... Um, they improved a lot of things. So they meant into more detail with the relationship system. As we said, it can be in different states. They also, different things you can do can kind of color, um, you know, each character's um, personal traits. So you can make certain characters cowardly or brave hmm. and all that, which is really cool. And then um, depending on where your relationship states are, you can min-max them and get extra scenes with that. So they really, the people who are taking the time to really uncover, because they mentioned, uh, they're like, oh yeah, they're in Until Dawn, one of the best characters that we had. Um, people initially hated her. And I'm like, are you talking about Emily? And they're like, maybe. And they said like, they tried to reward people who really went down the path of Emily because she does become a really interesting character if you don't get her killed. Like, yeah, right she, away. she she didn't die right away, but she that was like the frustrating death for me in yeah. that game. Yeah, that, like, that, I, got I, her, I, felt, I think we I felt, got her killed at the same time yeah, probably. Cause felt I, felt, helpless. I felt helpless in that situation. It was just like frustrating, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. so... They're, they're putting that, they, they um, improved some of the um, mechanics, QT, you can have jamming sequences and here's, all that. Okay. Here's my question, like, uh, Until Dawn ended up really taking off as far as, like, streaming goes, they have to, like, recognize they that, They did, right? they like, had mentioned that it's one of the most popular s- streamed games, and they, they know that. Well, did, did well they s- I mean, that's, a str- I mean, top. It's probably number seventy six or well, something. Well, I mean, for right. a little, for a smaller studio, sure. it's, it's sure. it was big when it came out. I yeah. guess. So I guess my question is, like, did they say anything to you about uh, considerations or accommodations they're making for it? Because it seems like already, if they're saying, "Hey, it's like a four or five hour game," they're already like catering to an audience that can like sit down and like you know play it in a sitting or watch, watch so you want someone like play it. Twitch integration into the games that I, you're looking for? I'm just wondering if they said anything they about that. They didn't say anything about that, but I know that that was part of the reason why they went, like, it seemed that they went through all this trouble to make sure paths were so different, because mm-hmm. it would be cool to see somebody's playthrough versus yours. Um, and I and like I said, I saw that firsthand, which I was very impressed. I'm also of the camp where I want choices to feel like they matter in games and they yeah. can be different, and my experience when I talk to you about a game can be very different depending on what our decisions are. And it's Mm -hmm. hard for, that's hard to nail and get right. But I feel like because they are taking this smaller scale here Mm -hmm. and really putting the time and effort into that, that it will ultimately work out better. Do you, yeah. Do you guys feel like the push for such realistic graphics is paying off? There's a party where I see this type of game and it's like, I'm fine if things are a little bit more abstract and cartoony, but like the fidelity of the faces and the new footage that we have, uh, we have it up on YouTube and Mm -hmm. informer.com. It's like, man, this looks like a lot of work. Is it necessary? I think in a, in a game like this, I I think you run into the same thing in something like Detroit become human, right? When it's like Mm -hmm. so much of it is based on character, like to, to get those sort of like subtle kind of emotive things. I think it's worth it for this kind of game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 To have that little detail. It is weird just thinking about Quantic Dream and how it seems like they're kind of branching out from the PlayStation uh, ecosystem. They have stuff on the Epic Game Store and whatnot. And then Supermassive also doing a similar thing. It's like, all right, goodbye, PlayStation. We're seeing whole new frontiers for these types of games. It's fun to see. Mm-hmm. Do you have impressions of the studio in general? Uh, oh, yeah. They're awesome. They are really huge. Uh, you know, they say horror is kind of in their blood and cool. they, you can definitely see that around the studio with like all the movie posters they have. And, you know, um, they obviously were talking about Hill House on Netflix recently. Oh, like, okay. Yeah. They, they dissect movies together and then they talk about like stuff they can draw on and take from that. So like when they went to do this project, they actually came up with like 
all these different subgenres of horror because they wanted to like mesh two for each of the games because they're all standalone. There's one through line in this guy called the curator, which I can get into more later, but he's in every game and you kind of see his arc. So it's your reward for playing every one of them. That's interesting. Okay, yeah. I'm glad they have something like um, that. But where was I going? You, with they that? love horror. Yes. So they did 42 subgenres and they wanted to, they came up with 42 and they wanted to m- mix like different ones for each one. So like this one is going to have like home invasion and ghost ship. Wait, 42 it. subgenres of horror? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause they just like put all these things together um, when they were trying to figure out what they wanted to do next. Cause they didn't want to be tied to until dawn. Um, cause they don't know who char- whose character survived or I think they just wanted to do something new. And I think this also, you could see the excitement and creativity of like, Hey, once we finish this one, we get to do something completely different and not be tied to what we did before yeah. and offer yeah. different facets of horror and because, all this stuff. Yeah. Until Dawn was a very specific kind of like dead teenager horror, yeah. where, right, you know, right. like, like the kids off in the cabin in the woods mm-hmm. with some sort of ambiguous yes. evil nearby. Yeah. yeah. I wonder for breaking down these different types of horror if they just I've been playing a lot of Betrayal recently if they just go to like the booklet for Betrayal like alright scenario number 32 <laughs> Invisible Guy that'll be the second <laughs> anthology ah, I think it helps spark creativity just to have those general ideas and then go for it through it but yeah they yeah. definitely have talked about the Invisible Man of the saying band. like yeah we definitely <laughs> uh, play off of all the different like cliches that you see but try to take them in a new direction that's so, cool so yeah. Kim you'd mentioned that they when you went there you saw th- there are other two games that were tied into Until Dawn which was the Inpatient and uh, Rush of Blood, Rush of Blood yeah. right but they also did did they talk about Bravo Team at all no they didn't okay because I just had to look up I was like they did oh, some yeah. they did some military they did some game they some weird also. stuff because they also did that Hidden Agenda game which was actually yeah. really fun oh wait yeah I played that yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well it's just it's, they're like horrors in our blood but sometimes we do things that aren't in our blood to pay the bills. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> well, Hidden Agenda is close enough, I guess. God, I, that's so... I completely forgot about all those games, but there was, like, that weird span just a couple years ago where it's like, oh, my God, they're just cranking out they, so many small well, projects. Well, they had said that they were trying to fig- to learn how to ship games fast and successfully, and that's why they feel confident about this schedule. We'll see. I think it's pretty ambitious. I would be happy to play two games from them. A year, yeah. but honestly, if I'm all for take your time, <laughs> you yeah. know, I'd rather have um, a very solid experience than one that feels rushed to make some, you know, arbitrary like release date that they yeah. throw out mm-hmm. there. So, it's... Man and the Dan actually comes out this summer, which is super. Oh soon. wow! So I'm super excited from what I saw. It makes me very. If you liked Until Dawn, I don't see why you wouldn't like this. Right. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited for it. I can't wait for the third part of the anthology called Bravo Team. <laughs> it's just like a hey, maybe. In case you didn't get it the first time, here we go. Uh, cool. Uh, you have a preview on the site as well, right? Yes. Very and cool. we have exclusive footage up of that first uh, scene that I had played, which is early on in the game. So you should check that out if you're kind of wanting to know what kind of tone this game takes and learn about the rich characters who... <laughs> Our, Literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a clip from a larger show called The Game Informer Show. You can find it on iTunes, Google Play, or GameInformer.com. We take the fun opportunities and exclusive information from Game Informer Magazine and boil it into a show that airs every Thursday with exclusive cover story information, developer interviews, a lot of fun stuff. So come love games with us. 